the UIM Formula 1 H2 a World Championship kicked off in style seven weeks ago with defending champion Sean Torrente taking pole and winning in Portimao, Portugal. However, two of his ex-teammates have excelled here in France as Alex Corella and Eric Stark have dominated qualifying in the last three years. But it's Philippe Schepp who is really feeling the heat, searching for some luck and a top 10 finish at his home Grand Prix. So who will set the pace and be the qualifying star this time around as the Rebellion qualifying is about to begin now. Welcome to one of the loveliest, most picturesque race venues anywhere in the world here along the foothills of the Alps of the southern shore on Lake Le Mans. Hi everybody, I'm your host Stephen Michael along with my partner of 19 years, ex-world champion Jonathan Jones. We are here in the captivating spa city of Evian, France for the fifth year in a row ready to kick off the rebellion qualifying to set the starting grid and to find out who will be on pole for today's 23rd Grand Prix of France. Now, Evian is a spa and resort tourist area here in eastern France on the southern shore of Lac Le Mans and opposite Lausanne on the Swiss shore of the lake. It's a mild climate. And the spa buildings and casino from the center part of town of this 9,000 person municipality is known for hosting international congresses and holiday events throughout the years. Now, Jonathan, you've been coming here for five years and uh, I know it's a very special place for you. It certainly is, Steve. I mean, you, you pretty much are here, which is world-renowned uh, golfing. Fantastic golf course here. Uh, you've got the casino. Um, just the views over the lake are quite unbelievable. And, of course, the local cuisine, the local food is second to none. So a great place to visit uh, during the season. For over 2,000 years, this area has formed a lovely area, Lac Le Mans, its picturesque city of Evian on the southern shore, a truly spectacular and amazing to see year after year. Well, it's been a wild weather week with three days of beautiful, peaceful, calm summer days, followed by yesterday's cold front that has blown in from the west and eventually canceling qualifying and bringing it here to the early morning session for the fourth time in five years here in Evian. As you can see, the clouds and the storms, the winds really kicked up, making things impossible for anybody to step out into the water and qualify, much less hanging on to some tents. Now, earlier yesterday in practice, you'll see how difficult the conditions were. Here's Thani Al Quimsey with Team Abu Dhabi struggling down through turns number three on the back straightaway trying to hold the boat down as he continued to fly the boat and he almost blew it over and you can see here with Eric Stark who's last year's winner doing his best as the conditions got just a little bit better but still the drivers did their best to keep it under a minute lap and Peter Moran was the fastest with a 55.96, which we expect today with the conditions getting a little bit better to be broken very easily. Now, it plays in the minds of everyone as the drivers went through that long process of waiting and waiting to get some kind of decision that they finally canceled out. Let's get some thoughts from the drivers and what it's like to just perpetually wait to find out if you will qualify. It's getting quite common here in, uh, in Evian. Uh, this, uh, this lake is quite big and uh, the wind has a lot of effect in the waters. It will be a busy day, like we had already here two years ago and three years ago. We will try to do our best. A lot of pressure for sure to not make any mistakes, but we did it in the past. For sure we will be able to do it tomorrow. It's good for us. We've been here five times before. We know how, more or less, how uh, the water will be in terms of propellers and everything. So um, we will be quite blind going into uh, qualifications, I think, um, but uh, we just have to make sure that we don't have any trouble during the, during the different sessions and then just flow through it. It will be a hard day for sure. Probably a five o'clock in the morning type deal to have everything prepared and, and do an early qualifying and then they'll have to turn the boat right around and get it ready for the race directly after qualifying and hopefully with no problems. Um, it's a really tough day for the guys, especially the drivers also because it's, you know, you have two different mindsets usually in two days and now it's all in one, um, but more for the guys that are preparing the boats and getting everything ready.
Well, Jonathan, you raced for three decades. You've been through all this. Uh, what are your impressions of what the drivers went through yesterday? Yeah, as uh, Sean Torrente there said, you know, it's, it's a tough day for everybody because to fill everything in in one day, you can't afford to have any mistakes in qualifying because, you know, you've got the race coming up just after it. And it's a lot of pressure, not only on the drivers, but on the uh, the mechanics and the and the, the crew chief and everybody else. So uh, a tough day ahead for everybody concerned. Well, today it's all about speed and reading the challenging conditions of this alpine leg that always serves up uh, all sorts of uh, fun and excitement. What makes this circuit so unruly, and how can these pilots, Jonathan, conquer it this afternoon? Well, you know, it's a wide-open circuit. There's lots of rollers. Come down past the start-finish line there into turn number five, we're going to call it today, then into six. Watch that corner, that 100-metre turn there. 460 then into the right-hander. Torrente almost lost control there. And then 450 into the bottom end of the circuit, Steve. A lot of t very rough conditions. They're going to have to be careful there. And then they swing it round and down past the finish line, another 360. So a real tough, demanding circuit here today in Evian. Evian always uh, tracks one of the largest field of drivers any time of the year here as we wrap up the European season. 19 drivers from nine different nations are hoping to capture the Rebellion qualifying trophy this morning. Let's take a look at the entry list. Sean Trente, the world champion, had a wild uh, practice yesterday, was able to survive a bit of a sideways crash. And Thani El Quimsy, his teammate, looking strong. Alex Corella will be in a brand new boat. We'll talk about that later. He's all excited about it. Philippe Shep, the three-time world champion, has never picked up a point here. Let's see if he can change that around today. Sami Celio is feeling more confident. And his teammate, Philip Rams, has been on the podium two of the past four years. Jonas Anderson has had a couple of podiums in France. And Greg Foster, who is the veteran newcomer from the USA, just getting his feet wet, hoping to do well here. Reed Strumoy looking for her second pole of her career. And Cedric Deguin hoping to get another top five finish. And Eric Stark rounding out the field. He won this race a year ago. He would love to get some more revenge. Now, Sami Selio, the two-time world champion from Finland, started this season in less than a spectacular way, finishing 10th in Portugal. The driver from Helsinki won the first Formula One race, his first Formula One race in Rochelle back in uh, 2007. How's he feeling about getting ready to qualify today? working hard to get the boat ready, all the boats have to repair it. I changed the boat and uh, let's see, it's let's say the latest Baba what I have. We went through the window, we did some modification. I didn't have that with me in, uh, in Saudi. It's in Portugal it was ready but I stick with the older one. And uh, let's see now, it's, it's ready for this and uh, I'm very positive that now we have the, the boat under me that uh, we can really fight for the wins. We'll see how it pans out for him. Now, no current driver here this weekend has won an Evian more than Italian Alex Carella. The four-time world champion finished uh, 12th in the championship a year ago, and he's chasing his first points in 2019. He's got a new bout. How's he enjoying the experience so far in the new DAC? Yeah, I'm looking good, you know, yeah. Little by little, finding back my... Finding back myself, I'm happy, especially in this water that was really bad. Uh, I feel comfortable, so uh, I think I can fight it today, hopefully for uh, for the top spot. Well, we'll see. We'll see how he does this afternoon. Here's what we're doing. Normally we have three qualifying sessions and we filter it down into Q3 with a top six go around for two solo laps. Today, we're doing this for the second time in the last three years. We are having a one hour qualifying session for today's Grand Prix. And we're gonna count every lap as we go around. So all drivers will stay out for one hour, try to do their best time around this six pin circuit and it'll be very captivating to see how it works out. Now, two years ago, Jonathan, it came down to the final minute as it was a battle between Alice Corella and Sean Torrente. Then you go on board with Corella, and Corella already down in the eighth position trying to get his feel for this new boat. It's uh, never easy, but he loves DAC boats, as we have heard. Yeah, you could see there was a bit of a spring in his step this morning, Steve. Uh, he doesn't generally say too much at all, you know, and when we try to interview him, uh, he's a little, you know, he's a little distant with us. But 
for the first time it's great to see a smile on his face he's obviously a lot happier I said why why do you feel you can do better he said because I've driven this DAC style boat for so many years and I know the limits of that boat which means I can push to the limit whereas the victory boat is something quite new and doesn't sometimes uh, suit my style of driving Steve another thing you mentioned was you know they got it wide open and it, it it, as you say, it could come down to the last two minutes. But what I like about this, because every lap counts, the conditions... Which means that every lap they have to push as hard as they can. And they are already. As you can see, Jonas Anderson has jumped to the top of the pile with a 50.82. Now, remember yesterday when they came out, the only other time that we've seen them out in anger, they were running 55-second laps, and Peter Moran was the quickest there. But I'll tell you something right now. The conditions are... a. Uh, the best that we've seen all weekend so far, which is a, a, a great notation to know. So hopefully it'll carry on with the Grand Prix this afternoon. So Jonas Anderson and Peter Moran now has jumped up into that number two position. Earlier, Torrente was up in the second spot, our current world champion. He's down in six right now. He's still 2.45 seconds in. But remember, we still got 53 minutes to go. And all the drama seems to come up in those last five minutes. Yeah, the other thing is, of course, because they had very limited testing yesterday, they weren't able to choose the right propeller for the job. They didn't know how rough the conditions were going to be. The nice thing about today is that a lot of these boats are going to go back to the pontoon once they've posted what they feel is a really good solid time they're going to be changing propellers they're going to be changing the tuning state of the engine so there's so much going on as we said earlier on when Sean Torrente said it's a stressful day for everybody concerned and that's what I love about this one hour open session is you don't know what's going to happen the other thing is it does give some of the midfield a better chance of getting up to the sharp end of the grid for the race which we'll have later on this afternoon interestingly enough right now the score drivers the Swedish drivers one two and four right now so the very talented crew of Swedish drivers with a couple of teams in the makeup as Jonas Anderson who has been on the podium twice in France has gone to the top of the sheets but there you get a chance to look at the rookie driver this is the second generation driver Alberto Camparato who had a great race in Portimao in his first run in Formula One of course he's a current uh, Formula Two champion as you take a look and they're Making the changes on the dock, Jonathan, as you mentioned about the propellers. And uh, Alberto uh, Camparato started in 19th and he jumped up to 8th. So good start for the youngster out of Italy. Another thing, I spoke to Jonas this morning um, and he said we are well prepared for this race. Both him and his teammate Eric Eden, who is a young driver that really is coming to the fore now. I rate this guy very very highly and under Jonas Anderson who's giving him a lot of tuition and everything they are really making an incredible team team Emirati so watch out this afternoon to see Jonas because he's had one or two issues going on to a propeller there you can see four blades on that propeller they'll be using my guess is quite small propellers out here for maximum acceleration maybe not quite so much the top speed as we pick up Bartek Marsalak another guy to watch out for you Steve he's a strong runner all right, Bartek Marzarak, the driver out of Poland. He's 35 years old in his eighth season out there pounding around. Now in his first race uh, this year in Portimao, he qualified in the ninth spot. Didn't get into a Q3. He was hoping to do so, but had a steady race, finished up into sixth position. He's very uh, much of a promotional man when it comes to promoting his sport here in Formula One in Poland as they broadcast it uh, live in Poland. And... Uh, he does a lot to promote the sport at home, which is fantastic. So Bartak Marzwak, who last year had three top tens, looking for his first victory in his 37th start. We see the local hero, Philippe Chiap. Now he's up in that uh, number one slot. A little bit of information that I picked up yesterday from Team China is that for the first time in quite a long time, Philippe Desertan, the team manager, has found a place for them to test in France. And it's making a big difference. They've been out there testing for the last four or five weeks prior to coming here. And this is where they feel over the last 12 months they've slicked back a little bit. They've not had that test time prior to coming to the races. But I do know they've been doing a lot of engine development. They've been setting up the boats. Chiap has been testing two different types of boats. And it's great to see the local hero from France back up there at the sharp end.
As we take a look at Bartak Marzwijk, he is working his way around. And for him, as we talked about, 37 starts. He's had three top fives. He's had one accident in his career, and he's accumulated 75 points. Now, he's been consistent. He's had 20 top tens in his last 27 races. And for him and Evian, his best qualifying was a fifth last year. So he's hoping to start up and start the race up in the top five once again. Right now, he's out there pounding his way. He just jumped from about 14th position up to 8th quick, so he's starting to get in the rhythm, and he's starting to pick up the pace. You're right, Steve. It's all about getting into the rhythm. It's about getting the feel for that boat in these very, very difficult conditions, watching, making sure, because every lap it is different, because we get the rollers coming in from the far end of the circuit, so at one lap you'll be out there and you'll think, right, next lap I'm going to go for it, the conditions are good and then all of a sudden you're confronted by one of these waves and uh, it could be curtains and like I said earlier on Steve, you cannot, have, you've got to push hard because pole position is so, it counts for so much here, but at the same time if you turn the boat over now, boy you're going to struggle for the race this afternoon. Scott Gilman, the four time world champion looking up at his driver, Ahmed Alhamli as you can see they're making a propeller change on the world champion Sean Torrente and uh, they're going to go take a look and uh, try to find a, a better prop for him because he's not happy. Currently, he's down in seventh position. He's about uh, 1.5 seconds off the pace. Yeah, you could see those propellers very, very sharp, almost like a razor blade. Very thin aluminium, even titanium they're actually developing at the moment. Um, and the propeller is paramount to get the fastest lap. It's not always looking for the top speed. You're looking for a propeller that gives you good acceleration, good mid-range, and a little bit of top end. And the, the reason I say that is you've got so many corners here, that what you've got to do is make sure that you've got a boat that can accelerate well off the corners, but also handle very well. And Sean Torrenti at the moment, like you said, Steve, at the, he's struggling a little bit to find the balance, and now we've got teammate of Chiat Moran now taking the lead. Well, as we take a look at Ahmed El Hamli out there, the driver out of Abu Dhabi, the 40-year-old, father of three, looking for his first victory in 14 starts. In Abu Dhabi last year, it was his first finish outside the top 10 in 44 races, so he's been very, very consistent as we take a look at the uh, Sharjah boat right now as they continue to look at, it uh, looks like Sami Celio's boat in the back. They're working on the engine. Celio was number one early. He's dropped down tonight. I can explain what they're doing there, Steve. These engines run at a certain temperature to get the most power, and basically, that telemetry that Sammy Sellio has on there, it's telling him exactly how that motor's performing. And you could see one of the crew there, they were actually working on the fuel management system. And what they tend to do is, they tend to, as the, as the uh, testing progresses, they lean the engine out. But you've got to be careful because you get to a critical point where you can blow the engine up. So the leaner you can get it, the faster you're going to go. But as, as I say, there's that fine edge as we pick up Torrente there now. He's uh, running a little bit better, Steve. He's up to seventh. And uh, as you pointed out, a new propeller, is he going to put in a faster? a lap with that. Nobody works harder than Sean Torrente to try to improve as he takes a look. There is his radio man, Alessandro Cremona from Italy. Torrente has won four of the last eight starts on the tour, including three of his last five races. He's had 11 podiums. He's got more points than anybody in Avion in the last four years. Last three years in a row, he's been on the podium, all in third place. See, the other thing, I can see the Torrente's backed off now. What you've got to do is you've got to find a clean lap. And this is where your uh, your um, uh, radio, man. radio man, I beg your pardon, is it, he plays such a part. Now, what Torrente needs to do, in my view, get down the far end of the circuit, wait there. When he can see that there's a clear lap ahead of him or there's no traffic that's going to hinder his progress, then the guy tells him to go. I see Torrente coming around now. He's taking a nice wide line on the circuit. Is he going to go for a Steve or is he pulling off the circuit again? Well, as you watch the man as they come back in, the victory team, Torrente over on the far side, going through past that uh, right hander into turn number four, now into five and six. There you see Philippe Shep slowing down, the man who from France, who all eyes will be glued on this weekend. He's had miserable luck, Philippe Shep. And last year he broke a prop while he was up in uh, the top three and then ended up uh, replacing the propeller coming back out. He finished in 15th position. 
So Philippe Shep, he's led a couple of times, Jonathan, but he's never picked up a single point in four previous races. No, it'd be uh, nice to get a wide angle there to find old Shep's down the far end. Now, is he waiting there or does he have a problem? Let's just keep our fingers crossed that he's just biding his time, waiting for some clear conditions as we pick up one of the Abu Dhabi boats then, Sami Selyo. All right, we're getting word now. Philippe Shep may be having steering problems and he's oh. pulled off the race course. So what does that do as a factor for the driver? Driver, you'll have plenty of time to get that fixed, but right now, this is hurting him in his possibility to get pole. He's in third right now. Right, when we say st uh, steering uh, problems, uh, j for me, just to explain, all of these boats run with electronic power steering. The problem that they have is that the torque of the propeller, and that's the pull that it has on the steering wheel, is so intense that they have a, almost like an electric motor to counteract the actual torque. Now, the problem you have is that if that motor is not even turn the steering wheel so with Chiap if he's got that problem there as you pointed out Steve it's a bit of big going to be a big problem for him you can see a change on propeller there now again with uh, Corella the uh, the guy that hopes he's going to do well out there today well Corella's won twice here in the last four years however he's mired down in the 12th spot so obviously when you're back over two seconds from the leader Jonas Anderson who has dropped the hammer down he's down to 49 seconds around this uh, six pin circuit challenging every Everybody. He's almost uh, a second quicker than anybody else. As Peter Moran now, Torrente now in anger moves up, up into the fifth position. Steve, we got a boat just on the far end of the circuit there that's broken down. Let's keep our fingers crossed it is not Jonas Anderson because he is right up there leading the times at the moment. And uh, you can see one of the... Uh, uh, rescue boats towing him away. Can't quite see the number on that boat. It's going to have to be Anderson Eric Edden. Is if it Edden? It's not, uh, from our vantage point, it's hard for us to tell the number. But as we look out under the race course to see who is out there, as we watch Sami Celio, it's either going to be Anderson, who has set the fast time so far, or his teammate, Eric Edden, the rookie of a year ago, who finished in the fourth position. Yeah, it is his rookie. Uh, teammate yeah. oh, from a year ago. That, 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 that is year. a shame. That is a shame. And Eric Edden is sliding off the race circuit. He's up in... in turn number four and five as you look at Sami Celio coming out of the final turn pushing hard. Celio almost made a mistake there. You can see how strongly he is trying to top five and he is he's in fourth position right yeah you now. can see the inside pickle he's obviously caught a wave on that far end it's damaged the pickle is he now going to back off they've just been into the pits you could see that the, the mechanics working on that fuel management system to try and get a bit more horsepower out of the engine and uh, it looks like coming down that back straight i just caught him almost lose control of the boat and uh, the pickle is a problem it's not a problem in that it will stop him actually making progress but uh, it's obviously bothering him at the moment as we pick up the 37 boat well uh, Michael Jenkins who is the team manager uh, working with Sami Selio obviously have told him here as we take a look and running strongly is the veteran Francesco Catando Catando has raced more than anybody else and the history of this sport for Francesco Catando starting his 178th race of his career in Portimao qualified well up in the top 10 he qualified eighth but he was the first one out of the race dropped out and of course uh, this time this team the blaze formula one team has got now power units this year they've got new engine power yeah they have they've been working with Ron Anderson from America who's uh, a pretty He's, he's a demon with these V6 engines. He seems to get a lot of horsepower out of them. But Cantando, as you pointed out, he's the most experienced driver out there. This is a boat that he builds himself. It's called a Blaze boat. Um, and they're really making some solid progress. The other thing is, in these really tough conditions, Cantando normally excels. He comes into his own. And uh, watch out for Cantando this afternoon. Well, right now, he's still trying to get the feel of this boat and his setup. Right now, he's four seconds off the pace from Jonas Anderson. He's mired down in the 17th position. And his teammate, the rookie uh, Greg Foster, is in the 14th position. So uh, the Blaze performance team trying to get themselves dialed up here. As you can see now, 
We have clicked off a total of 20 seconds or 20 minutes and we've got 40 minutes remaining here So we're a third of the way through Something unusual, but it seems like every other year we do it here in Evian Where instead of three qualifying sessions, we are doing a one hour every lap counts qualifying effort all the boats 19 drivers from nine different countries out there ripping around this six pin course and uh, waiting to uh, get hauling the mail here yeah and what i love about this steve is nobody can be complacent you know a lot of the time in, in uh, as we normally run people go out they do a fast lap and then they go back to the pontoon and sit there until somebody can beat it but here it's anybody's guess you saw philippe ship yeah, out of the good. boat not happy once again he has had such tremendously bad luck here at his home Grand Prix. He's never scored a point. He's a three-time world champion, Jonathan. I'll tell you what, he has had such wonderful success. It took him 83 Grand Prix starts to get his first victory, but then he really tore off and three years in a row winning championships. But it's been uh, now uh, 10 races since he last won a race. And uh, tell you what, he'd love to just get a top five here in France this weekend. And right now, because he has dropped out, for the rest of the session, possibly he's dropping down into the six spot. Yeah, the problem with the power steering that you mentioned earlier is that, you know, it's, it's not a problem repairing it. Um, that generally the motor's okay, but they have a, an ECU box, they call it. It's like a, almost like a mini computer that actually uh, works the motor itself, whether it puts more power into it, depending on how fast or how much torque there is. And uh, they'll be able to change that. Now, whether they can change it in time to get out for the end of the session it is possible still 38 minutes to go so if i was that team i'd get the boat on the trailer get into the front which is where that ecu box is change it and make sure we can get back out otherwise he's on the back foot for this for, for the race today yeah let's see how it pans out here because right now the top six is so very strong Jonas anderson you got the swedes one two eric stark has moved up into the second spot he is the defending uh, race champion here in evian he was part of that one two three finish for team Abu Dhabi last year and oddly enough as we watch uh, Bartak Marzawak continue to go around this course he's down in the ninth position he's 1.8 seconds back here's somebody we haven't seen yet Greg Foster rookie of the year candidate his first uh, year in uh, Formula One International Formula One competition and there's fellow American Sean Torrente he's back in he's not happy this is probably the third different propeller they're working on to try to get him comfortable and get some speed up as you look at Eric Eden being towed in for uh, the driver who's in his second year of his career here and uh, disappointed, uh, hoping to do a little bit better. He's down in 10th place. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I hope I'm not repeating myself. But like I said, it's not so easy out there. The conditions are difficult. You've got to, every lap has got to count. And this is where some of these midfield runners, they do have this opportunity to try and move up to the sharp end. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got the usual runners right up there, but uh, it does allow other drivers into the mix. You can see they're working. That is definitely something on the power steering again. You can see the guy there turning. You've got a long shaft, which is actually inside that box section there. And they're trying to sort something out there frantically on, on Celio's boat. Where do we have Celio at the moment? So he's in fifth position, but he's 1.03 off Jonas Anderson. Anderson leading the pack at the moment, putting on a blinding performance there with fellow Swede Stark in second. Well, we mentioned that there's four different drivers from France racing here in their home Grand Prix. As Cedric de Guin is out there racing. And uh, for Cedric, he returned to racing after over a decade back in 2015 when they brought the race here to Evian. And uh, he's been the most successful finisher of any French driver in the last uh, 36 years that they have been running the Grand Prix of France. And uh, for him, he finished fourth a couple of years ago here. And for Cedric de Guin, he would love to get up in the top 10 once again. Last year, he was uh, 16th in the uh, series where he finished seven points. As they continue to work uh, finding the correct combination for Alex Carella, the four-time world champion who was with the victory team for his second year. He's mired down in 13th, Jonathan. He's 2.4 seconds back. Yeah, maybe they're just trying to get the right choice of propeller he's been in two or three times now but what you mentioned the maverick team and what's so great about that is that uh, uh 
Mr. Stark in that second position at the moment is now running with that team. He's really going to, that team is going to improve immensely as we see Eric's father there who's in radio communication with him. And last year, at the beginning of the year, Stark was with the Maverick team. Then he moved to Team Abu Dhabi, did so well and could have won the World Championship at the last event. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be for him. But I think he's really going to carry this team going forward for the season. Great to see him back there. And watch out for Maverick Racing during the year. They could put up some really strong uh, uh, performances uh, during the Grand Prix. Roger Robar, the driver and the... He's the third member of the Maverick team. He is also up for Rookie of the Year. And he's had two total starts in his career. He had one uh, fail to finish. And he is from uh, Chalon sur saint where we raced for 11 years. And my colleague here and partner, who won two different uh, Grand Prix there in Chalon sur saint Yeah, it was a great circuit there. And, you know, France has a great passion for Formula One power racing. And we used to race. I saw Madame Douaillet yesterday uh, talk to her. She was the lady that put that event on for many years. Different type of circuit to this, Steve. You had a one mile long straight single turn boy, and then all the way back down under the bridges in the center of that wonderful, wonderful town. And uh, you know, it's uh, a little bit different to what we're doing here with lots and lots of corners, short straights, difficult racing, and uh, but it's great. France is very passionate about its uh, about its racing. Cedric de Guin out there racing as you see uh, Thani Quimsy back in. Thani fourth quickest right now. He started the year off in a uh, nice second place. He challenged his teammate Sean Torrente all the way to the finish line. And he was less than two seconds away from victory. And he chased down Torrente as we take a look at Cedric de Guin, who is in his sixth season of Formula One. He's not a youngster. He's about 45 years old. He's from Macon. France, which isn't far from Chalon sur saint and this is his 27th career start. He's had one top five, and it was here in Evian. So uh, again, he was over the moon, Jonathan, when he got a, a fourth place finish a couple of years ago here, and he'd love to do it again as we continue to look and see what's going on with Alex Corella. That's a new boat, and uh, he's down in 13th. They're not very happy right now. Yeah, 2.45 off is a country mile, and. Uh, you know, does he have some issues there? Is he still not quite confident enough in that boat? He hasn't run a DSE for quite some time now because he's been developing that uh, victory boat that's been built in Dubai. And, uh, you know, maybe it's taking him a bit more time. The other people that at the moment, Steve, are they just playing the waiting game or are they not? Is the team Abu Dhabi? Because uh, Torrente, 1.31 off at the moment. Thani, almost a second. And, uh, you know, with time running down, are we going to see team Abu Dhabi do what they did last year or are other teams uh, we mentioned it yesterday that they're working a lot harder this year they know the team Abu Dhabi was the uh, the benchmark are a lot of these teams upping their game we'll have to wait and see as we watch Katando out there that 23 year veteran out there in boat number 37 nice shot to do a stop could that be a problem they're slowing down Jonathan the yellow flag is out. Oh boy, I'll tell you something. This uh, CTI and his qualifying effort. We're almost at the halfway point, Jonathan. And uh, big surprises that we've seen. We don't do this very often, but today we are sitting out here and running strongly for one hour. All as the boats continue to uh, work their way around, a lot of boats have slowed up, pulled off. Being a little bit more difficult here. I know Torrente pulled off, as did um, Reed Stromoy. She's going. Cedric Deguin continues to pile up the laps as he goes around. He's down in 15th position. Yeah, I can see him around on the far end of the circuit, Steve. And I'm only, I'm only guessing, but it looks like he's just biding his time and waiting for some clear water because there's a few of the front runners right down there. As you see, Sammy Selya, we talked about his pickle fork. That's the uh, the, the pointed end of the uh, the boat, and they're frantically now changing that to make sure that uh, he gets out there. And there you got a chance to see Eric Stark. He's kind of minding his uh, P's and Q's out of the way right now. He's second in the uh, qualifying effort. 
Talk a little bit about what can happen handling-wise if the pickle fork comes off up in the front, especially on the inside pickle. Yeah, good point. Um, basically, when you come into a corner, the boat that the, the, the boat actually gets sucked into the turn as you go around. Now, if you break that pickle fork, you haven't got that pointed area that actually cuts through the water. You're up against a bulbous area, which is a little bit further back. Five blade propellers coming into play, Steve. I've talked about this for the last couple of Grand Prix. Great to see it. I'm a firm believer in these tough conditions as, uh, as we pick up the, uh, the boat Foster. there of Greg Foster. I'm a firm believer that in these tough conditions, five blades... They just hold the boat better on the back of the on on in these uh, rough waters. And uh, I've been talking about this now for the last couple of races. I hear that uh, Team um, Abu Dhabi have been playing around with them a little bit. I've used them quite a few times in the past. And if I was running here, I'll tell you where they're really good. They come off the line really quickly, Steve. So you get massive acceleration. But when it gets rough out there, the propeller handles on the boat a lot better. All right, we'll see how that pans out. Beautiful blue skies here this afternoon. A lot of boats in, and uh, there you can see uh, one of the uh, Dillard uh, course. Uh, couldn't tell if that was uh, the rookie, Alberto Camparato. He's struggling. He's down in the 17th position, or whether it was his teammate, Dwarf Benevente, who is in that 14th spot, as we once again see uh, Cedric Deguin go around, and he is... Uh, in 15th position. Yeah, that boat, you could see they've obviously got a battery problem of some sort. Maybe a battery's died. We need the battery power, obviously, to, to actually make all the electronic side of the engine work and also the power trim system because you can see that output engine. It moves in and out on the back of the boat. The further it moves out, the more acceleration you get and the more lift you get in the boat. But what you've got to do is you've got to try and balance it so that as you come out of a corner, you trim that engine all the way out, you get the acceleration. As you're going down the straight you move it in otherwise the boat will actually blow over and it's just fine tuning that engine as you go down the way you do it steve is you've got a lot of buttons on the steering wheel which actually control the ram system all right we'll keep an eye on that as we take a look at uh, Jonas anderson who leads this field right now as we are now down to 28 minutes left in this hour session and uh, as we watch the boats go around, you can see that we are in the foothills of the Alps. As you can see, the, the beautiful backdrop and Mont Blanc in the background. Over to your left of the screen is uh, uh, parts of Switzerland. And uh, such a lovely vantage point here on the largest of the Alpine lakes here in Europe. As you take a look at Philip Roms, Roms out there running. And you can see uh, the rookie, uh, Barrage Robar, stepping out of his boat. And uh, a guy who spends some time in uh, Florida, but he also lives in France. Yeah, and you can see them craning his boat out. And uh, unfortunately, he's right at the back of the field at the moment. And uh, got a big smile on his face. He, he just enjoys being part of the Formula One scene. You know, there's drivers out there that obviously, unless they win, they're never happy. There's drivers that know their place in the midfield. And if they can move from that midfield towards the sharp end, they're happy. And, you know, there's all sorts of people competing in this sport because of the passion that they have to race in Formula One. Greg Foster out there, we talked about his uh, girlfriend Kelly Ireland out there as the radio person for him, keeping him in contact. He races still in the U.S. as well as on the World Tour. Foster on a flyer right now, 2.2 seconds back. He's in that 12th spot, still learning the uh, the nuances of this boat, Jonathan. He threw a lot of weight in the other day in, uh, in practice, and he seemed to say that it really helped him because he's still trying to figure out a boat that he's never raced before, and he's been thrown right in the gauntlet, and uh, he's learning slowly but surely, I think. Yeah, good point on that as well. Uh, you talk about threw a lot of weight in the boat. Now, the reason they do that is these boats have got what we call lift. They're designed like an aircraft wing, and what happens is some of them have got so much lift in them, the wing area is such that the boat almost becomes uncontrollable so what they do then is they put ballast in the front of the boat in in the front of each sponson uh, which are the two areas uh, either side of the tunnel and that allows the boat to settle down and you still get the lift and the acceleration as you see there with uh, Greg really trying as hard as he can there almost losing control but you can see how the boat is controlled and then when it starts taking off with that ballast Steve it brings the boat down a little more gentle on the water 
Greg Foster, who has been racing since back in the 1980s, his first year in the U.S. Tour when he raced uh, Formula One is back in 1989. And uh, for him, he's uh, had a ton of races. He's had a lot of experience. As you take a look at Ahmed al Hamli, the driver with the victory team, and there they continue to try to fix the left front sponson of Sami Selio, the two-time world champion from Finland back in 2007 and 2010. His very first victory, Jonathan, on the tour was in France in La Rochelle back in uh, 2007. Yeah, and uh, there's no question that Sami this year is slowly but surely working his way up the field. Steve, you interviewed him yesterday. They've got a new boat here. Uh, it's taken a little bit of time to develop that boat by Massimo Ruggiero that owns the Baba company in northern Italy. And uh, they look quite strong out there at the moment as we go back. So it looks like they're working on the steering system on the back of uh, Philippe Chap's boat and hopefully they'll be able to get that boat back in the water. He's in that sixth slot at the moment and uh, Jonas Anderson there in the 14 boat sitting very quietly. He knows what he's got to do. He at the moment is leading by 0.66 of a second and uh, looking very, very strong. All right, the man who's on the charge right now, Sean Torrente, who leads this championship after winning from pole position in Portimao. He's looking for his ninth career pole and his ninth career victory this weekend. And in his 49th start, a four-time world speed champion. And he's on the headset with Alessandro Cremona as he talks to him, helping him, letting him know that maybe this could be a lap where he could get a clean run. Torrente in a little bit of a desperate state here. He's down in seventh. He's 1.3 seconds back, Jonathan. And off he goes. He's on a flyer. Let's see what he does here as he heads down down toward turn number two and three. Yeah, conditions really good at the moment, Steve. If he's going to do it, he has to do boats out there. He could post a really fast time. All right, as we watch the uh, young driver from Florida fly along, we go back to the veteran Italian who's raced more than anyone else. As we take a look at Sami Celio sitting, waiting, anxiously, trying to desperately get back out there. He's in fifth position, but as we get closer and deeper into this session, our qualifying effort, the chips are going to start raising in value, and Sami Celio doesn't want to be stuck at the dock, starting to slide. He just did. Torrente went to number two, Jonathan. He's up there now, a half a second back, and Celio just went from fifth down to sixth as he sits on the dock. Yeah. Uh, like I said, water conditions getting better as we pick up here. Um, Carella, let's just see if he's improved. He's had a fairly clean lap there, Steve. Is he going to move up? With, uh, he's moved up, yes. He's done a little bit better, but uh, still at the moment in that eighth slot, he's got to find 1.32 seconds. Yeah, he's jumped up five spots, and then uh, Philippe Shep now jumping back in, so the driver the three-time world champion from france who's looking for his first points ever at a home grand prix of france they've obviously fixed the steering problem jonathan they're quickly trying to belt him back in and that's not an easy process getting belted back in to go racing is it that's right and of course had we been running under the old system he'd have been snookered because he would not have been able to get back out again but because we got this open one hour um, qualifying session it's allowed him to get back in there he's got plenty of time he doesn't need to rush 21 seconds good conditions out there now steve the water is improving every single minute so uh, let's hope the chap can get back out there and move up great scrum oil. just went to number two jonathan and she put in a flyer less than two tenths of a second behind Jonas Anderson. Great Strumoy, there you see the woman out of Norway, the professional entertainer. And for her, this is her 12th season in Formula One. She started the year in Portimao. She qualified third and finished fifth. As again, we go back with our world champion, Sean Torrente, on the fly. He's going to try to get himself back up a little higher. And uh, off he goes. Steve, he's now up to third. No, yes, he's up to second now, 0 0.04. And he's going for another lap. So watch out for Torrente in the next couple of minutes because we could see a change for the lead. Two-thirds of the way through, Jonathan. We still have 20 minutes to go, and you can start to feel the vibe and the intensity climb and climb. It's getting more and more difficult. You can start feeling the tension being cranked up here with still 20 minutes to go as you look at Duarte Benavente, the driver from Portugal. 
Yes. Juan, a fairly consistent driver out there, sort of midfield moving into the uh, into the Premier League. Let's say now, spoke to him yesterday. He said that he's got a, a some new a new power plant on the back of the boat this weekend. He feels that it's going to give him that extra bit of performance that will move him there into the top top six. So uh, Benavente there, another five blade propeller, Steve. You can see five blades now becoming more and more popular. They're switching out from a four blade. So uh, interesting to see the development going on in propellers. The interesting thing about these five bladed propellers, as you were talking about earlier, Jonathan, we've seen them so far really only on one team, and it's being used by Catando and Foster. So that blaze performance team uh, feeling that, that uh, that's the way to go. That's the way they want to fly. And they're going to need to really come up with a bitter effort because Catando's mired down in 17th place. Foster is sitting in that 13th position. Yeah, struggling at the moment. But uh, as we pick up uh, all Eric, Eddin. Eric Eddins back out there. So it wasn't an engine problem. Let's just see how he makes progress now in the next lap or two. He's got good water conditions out there, Steve. We know he's got speed in that boat, which uh, is prepared by Jonas Anderson, the guy that owns the team. And uh, let's see how he gets on. Donnie El Quimze has just... has been the first driver to run a sub-49 second lap. He did a 48-9-1, and now Janie, who is on the radio, she is talking to her husband, Jane Pearson, telling him, you have just slipped a spot. You are no longer the fastest pilot on the water. You're number two. Move yourself back up. So the difference between first, second, third, and fourth, Jonathan, is like two-tenths of a second. We still got 18 minutes to go. This is really starting to crank up. This is fun and exciting. Yes, all right. At 19 and a half seconds, we saw Stromoy in second position and Torrente way off the pace. And in that last one minute, Steve, we've seen the change for first, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So it's all to go for with 18 minutes to the end of the session. All right, Stromoy goes to number one with a 48-4-4. She jumps up, turns the wick up, and now she's almost a half a second faster than Thaniel Quimsey. As we look at uh, Ahmed al Hamli. Oh, Holly, the driver with the victory team, down in 12th position. And we're not used to seeing that from the speedster from Abu Dhabi, who has 10 career pole positions. Ahmed Al Hamli in that victory design boat is pushing as hard as he can right now as he heads for turn four in the right hander. Yeah, it's interesting to see victory now running uh, a well tried and tested boat with Corella, which is the DAC, and Al Hamli still preferring the victory boat that they built down there in Dubai. And uh, you can see there the number 77 boat. Uh, that's Martek Marcelat. Maybe a problem. You can see they're plugging into the fuel management system there. I reckon just to lean the engine out, as I said earlier on, to get that extra bit of performance, they're going to need to move up the grid. All right, as we take a look at Eric Ed, and we kid him, we call him Burger Boy because his family, very successful business with McDonald's restaurants all throughout uh, Sweden. And he started in the 10th spot, didn't finish the race, dropped out in the 16th position as we continue to look at Bartek Marswak, mired down in the 11th spot, almost two seconds off the pace. There's Eric Stark, last year's winner. He switched after winning in London a year ago from the Maverick team. Team Abu Dhabi took him on. And then uh, at the end of the year, he went back and he uh, joined up with the Maverick team once again. And uh, right now, uh, he's trying his best to uh, get back up. He was the fastest for a while. He's down in that eighth position. So expect to see him come flying down here and picking up the pace. Yeah, let's hope there's a stab there. Um, let's hope that we stay on board with Stark. Uh, if he's going to come in, I'm just trying to see, is, is he there? Yeah, he's outside. He's out there now, Steve. He's gone down past the finish line. Let's see how he performs over the next lap. The big news right now is Philippe Shep has jumped up to third. So he's got his act together, got the steering taken care of, and uh, he's up in the top three. He's got to be excited about that. So Torrente, who was in second, has dropped all the way down. Our world champion's down in the fifth spot. But we have not heard the last from the driver from Florida yet. Oh, for sure. But we haven't heard the last from a lot of these drivers. You know, Stromoy there. What a blinding lap that was. 0.47 of a second faster. And then we've got, is this Jonas Anderson coming through again, Steve? Let's see how he gets on. He was leading there for quite some time. Anderson. Uh, we're on board with Jonas on a fast lap. 
All right, so as we watch the driver coming through from Fruvi, Sweden, sliding through turn number two to the short. Oh, we got a problem. We got a yellow flag out on the race circuit. Problem down in turn number two, Jonathan, is a look like from long distance, yo, Ahmed Al Hamli. Yeah, it's one of the victory boats, and. Uh Looks I like it's just possibly a breakdown, yeah, Jonathan, but yeah. he's in harm's way. They're going to have to move him out of the way, and that makes things a little bit interesting. They're going to quickly slide him out of uh, turn number two, and uh, with the clock running, this uh, slows everybody up and uh, gives everybody to have a breather here, but it's also hurting drivers who are farther down out of the top five, trying to uh, find an effort to uh, move. that the driver there's a screen there on that cockpit the driver's actually sitting in a cocoon it's what we call um, uh, uh, system in the event of the boat turning over and that is an immensely strong area in the boat on the outside of that we've got what we call the crash boxes so if two boats collide that crash box area absorbs the energy of the collision. So a lot of development in these boats, and obviously we're continually looking for on the safety aspect as well. As you can see, it only took about a minute and a half, but we're back to green flag racing here in qualifying. We're glad you're with us here today as we are in the third round of the UIM Formula One World Championship. This is qualifying as it is also race day here along Lac Lama or Lake Geneva here in Central Europe as we round out our second uh, and final European round of this 2019 season. And right now, Marit Stromoy is up and charging. She is the fastest looking for her second career pole, but there's still 13 and a half minutes to go as we take a look at uh, one of the rookies here, the three in the lineup, Alberto Camperano, the youngest driver in the field at 21 as he comes by. As you look now off to the west as the driver is sliding out of turn number five and six. And here is Philippe Shep, the three-time world champion who was having problems earlier in this session. And they were able to fix it. We see Eric Stark heading back at. Stark has slipped down to the eighth position. Interestingly enough, Jonathan, had we been doing it this normal way where we would have had three qualifying sessions, Philippe Shep wouldn't even be involved in this right now. He would have dropped out and would have been very disappointed that because we're running this unusually, a full hour, every lap counts. They had enough time to go back to crew to fix the problem and put it back in. Yeah, and that's the great thing about this hour. It's, it, it's not like a full goal conclusion as to who's going to be there, you know. Sammy Sell, you're having one or two handling problems with that boat, Steve. You could see there coming out of the corner and uh, the front end sort of, you know, trying to keep it on the waters. We pick up the young uh, Alberto Comparato at the moment. Uh, Comparato now moved up to 11th position, 1.87 off. His father will be on the radio to him. Very, very experienced. A long time, he used to race for, team, uh, for the DAC team and uh, now helping his son, uh, who's done so well in Formula 2, moving to Formula 1. This is a tough circuit for him, mind Steve, with these conditions. And his teammate, Dwarf Benevente, just jumped up five places. Put himself up into the 11th. That's three. So Sean Torrente, our world champion, less than three tenths of a second off. One position for the 48 3 3. He is uh, one tenth of a second faster. You see Ahmed Al Hamli out of the boat. Yeah, I think he, he feels that he's probably done, Steve, as much as he can do, because with 11 minutes ago, I don't believe that he's just gone out and uh, he's going to get back into the boat. But uh, maybe he feels that as much as, as fast as that a boat will actually go. And, uh, you know, he must be a bit disappointed. Yeah, tough, uh, tough decision to uh, wrap up the afternoon for him. He's down, mired in that 14th position. But, you know, he's a charger. He could very easily, once the race starts, Yep. Later on today, yep. get up into the top ten and chase down points as you look at the, uh, the uh, rookie right there running out. That's Camperato, Alberto Camperato. He's down in 12th position, and he's just about two-tenths of a second behind his veteran teammate, Dwarf Benevente. As you look at Sean Torrente, who 
slip down to that fourth place position once again. Marit Strumoy going back up to the top again. Boy, she and uh, Jonas Anderson, uh, the Nordic combination, Norwegian jumping the Swede once again here in France. Yeah, it looks like the Nordic uh, drivers seem to be really thriving in these uh, in these rough waters. You know, when you if we go back to the Viking times, they used to love being out there in rough water. And they felt they had an advantage over people. And same in rallying in the World Rally Championship. The, the Nordic uh, drivers, amazing. And it looks like uh, they're doing exactly the same out here in uh, Evian this weekend. Well, the Vikings love to say Skoll. That is their chant. That is their war chant. And right now it's Skoll Vikings because... Uh, all of a sudden, the French now have something to cheer about. Philippe Shep has jumped to number one with a 48.02. What a great run for Philippe Shep, who has been on pole here before, Jonathan, in Evian. And he is determined to change his bad luck around. And boy, with nine and a half minutes to go, he is currently in a great position to do that today. Yeah, and it looks like that test testing uh, opportunity they had before coming here, as I say, they struggled to find a venue that would allow them to test in France, but they found somewhere fairly recently they were able to fine-tune and get everything really well dialed in, uh, do a lot of propeller uh, testing and, and the like, and it seems to be looking good because a lot of people thought that Chiap had lost his way, but uh, he's certainly proving today that he's still a front-runner and he still has a chance to win the championship this year, so good on Chiap to see him coming back out there and now being right... Peter Moran... many times in his career this is only his 15th start and he told me yesterday Jonathan that when you're a marathon driver like they were many 24-hour races or six-hour events qualifying didn't matter that much so he's got a new mentality here he's got to learn to go quickly in qualifying and he told me that's my weak point I gotta get better at it yeah but the other thing Steve is it seat time in these Formula One boats it counts for so much and if you can do a 24-hour race you are learning every single lap about the limits of these boats so although as you say qualifying doesn't matter quite so much seat time time driving the boats does count for an immense amount especially when you're running these finely tuned Formula One craft that we see out here today well, as you look at um, Fanny Shep, uh, she is on the radio with Peter, and uh, Peter, of course, has had two podiums and seven top fives and 11 top tens in just his first 14 races in Formula One. This is only his third season. His best qualifying effort, by the way, Jonathan, is a fourth in London and in Sharjah. Last year, he qualified eighth where he was a moment ago. He's moved up a spot. He's up into seventh, and he finished in fifth a year ago. The, other, the one thing I will say is that with Chiap leading at the moment, Peter Morin knows that the equipment that he's got, because it's very equal between the two of them, is capable of getting in pole position. So let's see how he performs over the next couple of laps with seven minutes to go. All right, we're starting to get down to uh, the time that starts to make this whole session, this whole hour, so very, very important. It's 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 go time Jonathan right now less than seven minutes to go as we look at Alex Corella who's down in eighth position Corella who has won this race twice would love to get up into the top five and challenge for a victory looking for his first points of this year after starting in Portimao in 14th place he dropped out early in that first uh, race of the season that he ran and he would like to get some points today and Corella pushing hard Still down in the eighth spot, but he's got a lot more left in him with six and a half minutes to go. Yeah, that boat looks good on the water. That's the best I've seen him running, Steve, all morning. And uh, oh, as we switch back to another one of the uh, Abu Dhabi boats, Carella on that back straight now, as you said, in eighth position and really needs to make a move very, very soon because, like we said earlier, pole position is going to be, you've got that inside line, nobody can take your line coming into the first turn, boy. And as we've seen over the last two or three years, pole position counts for so much at the start of the race and the actual outcome of the race itself. And Torrente pushing, sitting in that fourth spot right now. Sean Torrente, the world champion, has never done well in qualifying here in 
Jonathan. He's always struggled. He's always had a fight from behind. We saw that two years ago where he was all the way down in his 16th spot and finished up on the podium. He started in seventh a few years ago, got to the podium. He's been on the podium three straight years in a row, but he's never qualified better than second here in this race. But a good point there from you, Steve. He started at the back, and then he came up to seventh. The big issue is this. Oops, as we see... Eric Stark, Eric Stark down, down in the ninth. ninth. That's not a good sign getting out of the boat with five minutes to go. But as you said, he got up to seventh. Now, the big issue is from getting from seventh to the front because there's only a hundredth or so of a second between the top six boats uh, during the actual race itself and that's where getting a good grid position and as I say Chiap at the moment must have one big smile on his face he's still leading the way Stromoy pushing hard in that second position and Jonas in third all right, as we watch his uh, teammate and uh, best friend, Peter Moran, working his way around on this race course, trying to move himself up from that seventh spot. He needs to uh, find a second here. Let's see what he does coming through the corner. Uh, ooh, that was close, Jonathan. Yep. Able to save his mark as he heads down to turn number four in the right-hander. Yeah, a bit of traffic around him in that area. Let's hope it doesn't hinder him as he comes back down the back straight blindingly fast. Boat looking really well planted on the water. And by that I mean that it didn't flick him from side to side. We pick him up now on the shot here. Coming into the last but one turn, boy, Steve. Into the last turn. This is where he's got to really open the engine out. Oh, perfect as he comes down the straight. Is he going to move up from that seventh as he comes down to the start-finish line? All right, let's find out as he comes through. And he comes whistling by us. And looks like he didn't move, so he continues to run strongly. But he's down in the seventh position. He looks fast, but he didn't make up room. Three minutes, 40 seconds still to be run. It's go time, Jonathan. It's now the time to shine. And we look at Jonas Anderson, who for so much of this session has been number one. He's down into third as we watch the replay of Peter Morak coming out of the final corner here. Did a bit of a launch as he slips by turn number six down the front straightaway. Yeah, three minutes and eight, 17 seconds to go, Steve. And you can see him around there. Still knows he's got to move up positions. Otherwise, he doesn't have a good chance of winning this championship. One of the Abu Dhabi boats there now working on the back. I'm sure what they're going to be doing there again is fine-tuning. You could see playing around with that manage that fuel management. It's basically, Steve, a brain which controls everything inside the engine and gives it performance. And it's critical that you get that set perfectly if you want to get on that pole position. Sammy Silly on a flyer as you go by here. We take a look at Alex Corella. Meyer down in the eighth spot. He wants to climb up quickly in that new DAC boat that he's running for the first time this year that he's very familiar with. And he's won two races. Oh, my. Look at Alex Corella almost losing it as he was slipping and sliding as he was yawing that boat back and forth almost lost it Jonathan as he gathered it back up he is on a fly let's see if he can move up here boy I'll tell you something that was 10 tenths plus another tenth thrown in yeah you can see that you see obviously mm. losing a massive amount of time there as he tries to get that boat settled back on the water you could see the propeller spinning at about 10 or 11 thousand rpm as it ex mile an hour in just on two seconds he's both top speed around here around 130 135 miles an hour all right as we watch Corella, we continue to see thaniel quimsey has stepped out of the boat he's in that fifth position just behind his teammate second in the championship so obviously uh, his day has run short less than two minutes to go jonathan we're down to about a minute and a half and Thaniel Quimsey has done in his charge for pole position. Yeah, I've seen the expression on his face. He's obviously not happy with something. We don't know what it is because we're way down uh, about a half a mile away from the uh, from the, the, the pontoon where they uh, launch the boats. But we're back with uh, Torrente. It's now or never, Steve. One minute to go to the end of it, Torrente. He needs to find at least 0.6 of a second. It's not going to be here on this lap, Jonathan. It will be probably on the very last lap as he's trying to set himself up. He backed off a bit looking for clear water. One last shot for the world champion to try to make it two poles in a row here in 2019. But I could see there both Jonas Anderson and Eric Eden on a blindingly fast lap. They're going for it as well as Torrente works his way round, comes into the far end of the circuit, Steve. 
42 seconds to go accelerates out I think he's just coming in yeah here we go Steve he's into a fast lap let's just see how he controls that boat on the water how hard he pushes it and can he get that boat position all right 30 seconds to go we watched the world champion Torrente he's down in that fourth spot would love to make it two poles in a row for 2019 team Abu Dhabi it's up to him right now because Ahmed Al Hamli has uh, fighting and Anthony Quimsy his teammate is down in fifth and he will not get the shot for pole he stepped out of the boat Jonathan yeah and as he comes into the right hander oh oh my goodness he set the boat scrubbed off a little bit of speed there Steve that probably lost him a couple of tenths of a second the boat seemed to bury itself in the corner as he goes now down that long straight into the last two turns he comes around and he's backed off. He cannot do it, Steve. He's left down in the fourth slot. So the bad luck for Torrente and qualifying in France continues. Philippe Shep, here's his teammate, Peter Moran, in the seventh spot. Desperately trying now, trying to make it one, two. He comes across the line. Did he move up? As Peter Moran comes by and he is done. He qualified in the seventh spot as the checkered flag has come out. As you watch. Uh, one of the drivers, it looks like it's Greg Foster trying to move up from 15th position as the checkered flag has come out it, here, Steve. Jonathan. He doesn't do it. He's still 15th, uh, Foster. That He will be disappointed with that performance because on his day, I mean, he really lights up the boat, Greg. And, uh, you know, we, we, we're we really hoping that, uh, you know, he does better. And, and I'm sure he will during the race itself. So Philippe Schapp in his 120th start picks up his seventh career pole position, his second pole position here in France, the first one since 2015. And for Philippe Schapp, who has no points on this season so far, this was a big performance as he will start number one at his home Grand Prix looking for a, a victory that he's never gotten here in France before in front of this huge crowd in Evian. And look at the excitement by the CTIC China team. They know their veteran three-time world champion Philippe Shep is on pole position. Yeah, Shep is back and he's really put the hammer down there this morning. Do you know, the boat looks so well controlled. It, 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 it suits these conditions, Steve. It really does look very well planted there. We can see him now coming down past the start finish line. First part of the job done, Steve, but uh, still a long way to go this afternoon. Reliability could come into play, but I'm sure Chap there clapping to himself saying, good job, man. We're in a good position to win this Grand Prix for the first time. And why not? It was not easy, remember. He had all sorts of problems, steering problems. They had to tow him back in. He missed over half the session, was able to fix the problem and get back out there and then set the fast time. As we said earlier, there is a lot of pressure, not only on the driver, but all of these team members. And you can see there Philippe uh, Desitan, who runs the team out of La Rochelle in France, very, very happy, and uh, Eric Chan, who uh, finds the finance to run the team, he must be chuffed. You can see he's probably uh, texting messages to his fellow uh, investors saying, great job done here this morning. All right, let's take a look at the results here as we have this one-hour session. Philippe Schaap on the pole with a 48.02, two-tenths of a second faster than a, a wonderful effort by Marit Stromoy. Again, a great quality effort for her. Jonas Anderson, who was up in the top of the sheets for a long time, down in third position. Sean Torrente, the defending world champion in that fourth spot. Daniel Quimsey, his teammate, starting fifth and Sami Celio with a good sixth place position. Peter Morat tried desperately to make it a French 1-2. It didn't happen. He'll start seventh. Alex Carella in his new boat down in the eighth position. Eric Eden, who has finished uh, up in the top five before, will start in the ninth spot. Eric Stark, another fellow Swede, disappointed down in tenth place. Duarte Benavente climbing up late to get the eleventh position. Alberto Camparado, he also did a major jump in the last five minutes to move up into the twelfth spot ahead of Bartak Marzawak. Ahmed Elhamli dropped down a little bit earlier. Greg Foster tried desperately to get the boat going in 15th. Cedric Deguin, 16th. Francesco Catando in the longest running uh, race driver in the tour. And the rookie uh, Robert Abarroger wrapping things up for him. And there you have it. 19 drivers from nine different countries. And there's the man who set the pace today with a 48.02 in front of his home ground. You can see how emotional he is, Jonathan. He is just so excited because they went through so much drama in this last hour in this qualifying effort today. They thought they were down and out. They towed him back in. 
they realized the problem. They quickly uh, went to work. And it's not easy to work on a boat when it's sitting there floating in the water that's being uh, constantly moving around. They had to be precise. The crew was. They were professional. They got the job done, and they got the driver out as fast as they could. Yeah, a lot of pressure, like we said, Steve, on a lot of people there this, after, uh, this morning. We thought he was out for the count halfway through. Thank goodness they craned the boat out of the water. They, uh, they got the problem sorted really quickly back on the water. And boy, did he put in one blinding performance out there this morning. The confident nature of this man, who is a three-time world champion, Philippe Shep, is back. Well, thanks for joining us here this morning on a very special edition of qualifying for today's Grand Prix here at the Rebellion Qualifying Action. We'll see you back here at uh, 1500 local time this afternoon. That'll be 1300 UTC around the globe. And at late night at 2300 Australian Eastern Daylight Broadcast Time. Or join us for breakfast at 9 a.m. Eastern Time in North America for the final European round of this 2019 UIM Formula One world championship for power boating at the 23rd grand prix of france so with the backdrop of the lovely summer day here along the southern shore of lac le mans for jonathan jones and all our great international broadcasting crew i'm stephen michael your host saying goodbye and go out and make it a great day we'll see you later on in the afternoon so long everybody